Hello everyone, my name is Joyce and I'm going to be making a video today about different kinds of watercolor paper. The purpose of this video is to help anyone else out there who may be a little overwhelmed by all the choices out there. I said out there too many times. Let's, let's, roll, let's roll with it. Just went on a mini watercolor paper odyssey and I'm here to share my little insights with you, for you, such as they are. Okay. So first up is Jackson's Two Rivers cotton and linen paper. I had three samples here that I ordered from Jackson's Art Supplies and they've got a 140, a 200 pound and a 300 pound weight paper. Uh, these are samples, that's why they're so tiny. So I did the best I possibly could. Um, these are all cold press. They don't actually have hot press. I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to mention four different four different uh, qualities of the paper that I'm looking for. So first off is paper durability. This paper is very durable. All of the weights of paper are very, very durable. I like that a lot. I didn't put it to too through too much um, torture because they're so tiny. It's kind of hard to beat something up when it's so tiny, but I did my best. did my best to abuse this poor paper. Ah, oh, it's terrible. So does the watercolor bleed when you paint on the surface of this paper? And uh, no, no, it doesn't. It has a nice, if you're doing a color wash, it's very nice. All three of these, let me just do this so you can see it better. All three of these have, uh, the wash was actually quite nice. It went down very evenly. It didn't absorb in weird, weird spots or anything. It was, uh, it was great details it's kind of hard with cold press but the website was right the 140 is actually a lot smoother than the 300 pounds even though they're all cold press so you could get more detail into the 140 but overall i like i like this paper a lot i like this paper a lot i will absolutely buy this paper again the detail i i thinking that even though it's cold pressed, you can get a fair amount of detail in there. Um, the color, the pigment, is, it sits on the surface. As you can see, it's very, very bright. I painted this a couple months ago at this point. It looks great. I'm very happy with how bright and brilliant the color expresses itself on the paper, even after time. So I painted this and I left it sit for a few weeks and then I went, by, uh, went back with a really hard brush one of these kinds of lifter brushes and i lifted out the pigment weeks later and i just really abused this paper and look it really lifted it out now this color is non-staining but uh it took it like a champ like there's no damage to the surface of the paper at all there's no there's no fuzziness even the 140 uh this paper is durable and it's really awesome so points for that now now to water load and warping this paper will take it. I put masking tape on the uh, on the 140. As you can see right here, there's a color difference. And um, when I left the masking tape off, it didn't lift the it didn't lift the paper at all. It didn't damage the paper. Uh, I I soaked this little swatch <laughs> as much as I could, and it didn't really work that much. Look at that. Some some papers, even though you tape it down it will still warp and this didn't do that so it's excellent paper i like this paper a lot and um also i don't think there's a right or wrong side to this paper some papers you can only paint on one side um this paper looked great i like jackson's two rivers cotton and linen even though it's not hot press i will buy it again for sure okay next paper is the saint cuthbert's mill New Botanical Ultra Smooth. This is a 140 pound hot press white, 50% cotton, cotton, and 50% I'm guessing cellulose. It's acid free and archival, mold made, and internally sized. So, 
um, this paper. Let's talk about the paper durability. It's, yeah, as far as taping it down, because this is only 140, the masking tape didn't really damage the paper, so that's, that's good. Mm, the details, you can get pretty fine details, which is, you know, what this paper is designed for. There's, uh, there's not a lot of bleed, as you can see. The color, the colors are pretty vibrant, right around here. Not so much around here, but that, that could just be my technique. Um, let's see here. Pigment lifting. Pigment lifting was okay. I went back around here and I lifted some pigment and then I put another wash over on top. It was, it was okay. Let's see, and the water load. This, this paper doesn't really like a lot of water. You know, it doesn't like a heavy wash. So, you know, obviously it's, it's made for botanical uh, illustrations. So, also, I think you can, there is a right and wrong side to this paper because I tried painting on the back and the the colors bled. I don't know if you can see that, but I wasn't that paper was dry when I when I painted the stem on top of the paper and it it bled. So this is definitely it seems like it's not the right side of the paper. I didn't have that same problem on this side, but I am um, I mean it was okay paper. Would I order it again? Probably not, but it was okay. So there's that. Okay, so next up is St. Cuthbert's Mill, Saunders Waterford. This is 140 pound, hot press, high white, 100% cotton, acid free and archival mold made, gelatin surface sized. The paper durability is, is okay. It'll take some scrubbing, but it doesn't like the masking tape I used. It lifted up the paper a bit on the edges, as you can see. So. It damaged the paper. I mean, it's not bad if, if that, you're not going to see that part, but you know, I'd, I'd rather my masking tape not do that. I'll, maybe I'm using the wrong masking tape. I'll give the benefit of the doubt, right? So would I abuse this paper too much? It is 140, so probably not too much, but I, I was able to lift out some pigment around here, so that's good. I, I wouldn't push my luck, though. It, it was starting to get a little strange around here, so I just left it alone. So I, I did a wash and the pigment settled pretty nice. Then I lifted the pigment out after it was dry. And then I put another wash of a different color. It was, it did it fine, but I wouldn't abuse this paper too much. So the details, the details are pretty good. I don't know if you can see it, but I was able to get a lot of detail around the eyes and the beak area and some of the feathers. So yeah. I'm pretty happy with this. I, I did some salt effects too. And uh, took it like a champ. Took it like a champ. It was pretty good. The colors is nice and bright. So uh, as you can see, this is a few weeks later, a couple months later. Looks pretty good. As I said earlier, pigment lifting is okay. Just, just do it gently because you can damage this paper. And um, uh, this paper warped quite a bit when I did a heavy wash, but it settled back into place because I had it taped. It's it's still a little crooked, but not too bad. I think every paper will do that at 140 pounds, so not bad. Would I use it again? Maybe. It's, it's in the okay list. Let's put it that way. All right, next. Okay, so next up is St. Cuthbert's Mill, Milford. This is cold press and white and it's 100% cotton. Supposedly it has a high resistance to water, so its washes perform very differently to traditional watercolor papers. Okay, it's internally sized and it's cut on four edges. So, um, going forward, let's see, paper durability. It's, uh, it was more durability than the pre, or more durable than the previous paper. So and it was able to take a little bit more abuse. As you can see, I left it out. I scrubbed on the paper a bit. So for 140, not bad. Um, I was able to get detail. As you can see in the beak and the eyes, there wasn't any color bleed, even in the abused areas. <laughs> Usually if you, if you really damage the surface sizing of the paper and then you try to paint detail over it, it fuzzes up the paper and it causes it to be, you know, it causes it 
to bleed when you try to do detail work. Um, this, not so much. I, I usually also abuse the wing area because I'm always trying to get the feathers just right. Not bad. It's not bad at all. I liked it. The colors are nice and bright, as you can see. Uh, like I said earlier, pigment lifting is it's pretty good. I, like I said before, this is a non-staining uh, pigment, but in some in bad watercolor papers, not it doesn't even matter if it's non-staining; it'll just sink in. But no problems, no problems with weird um, with weird issues with absorbing pigment unevenly. It, it did a pretty good job of. I, I could get an even wash of pigment over top of this paper, so that's good. And um, it didn't warp that much, so you know maybe their claims are pretty good. It did warp a little, but and I did tape it down, so. It, but it wasn't that bad. It didn't warp. Like some papers would just totally bend like this in, in strange ways when I put a heavy wash. And this is a heavy wash. So yeah, I didn't have any problems. I, I do like Milford and I would try it again. All right, next up. This is the St. Cuthbert's Mill Bockingford. This is a 100% wood-free bleached chemical pulp. Uh, that, that means there's no cotton in it. <laughs> It's hot press, it's white, and it's 140. Paper durability. It had some problems, once again, a lot of problems with my masking tape. I, you can't see it here, but when I pulled the tape up, it started pulling the rest of the paper up too, which uh, was no bueno. So I had to just try to mask that with paint, and I, I put some sizing on top of that so it didn't, it wouldn't look weird. It didn't like me scrubbing. Maybe it has something to do with it not being cotton, but uh, yeah, it's not incredibly durable. I would use a light, if you have a light hand and you're not going to do heavy washes, sure, you know, use this paper, but maybe not so much for me. The bleed in the details, um, I'm able to get some detail in, so I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. As you can see, the feathers down there. I did use a scraping technique with a, a knife and it seemed okay. I was able to get details in the feathers. Um, let's see here. Pigments express themselves very brightly. Like, like it just sits on the surface, so it looks very bright. It didn't sink too much into the paper, as long as you don't use a heavy wash. The pigment in the background really started just sinking into the paper. And it's supposed to be a duller color. However, it may be a little bit more dull because I used a heavy wash. Multiple heavy washes. Like I said earlier, pigment lifting, no. It, it doesn't like you scrubbing the paper at all. It does warp a little bit, but not bad. It's okay. Would I use this paper again? Probably not. I do I do tend to like the cotton and linen papers better. They just I just need a more robust paper. But this is okay for somebody out there who has a light hand at watercolor painting, then great. Okay, next up. This is Canson Moulin du Roy. I always want to say Moulin Rouge. Have to, I'm going to have to say that very slowly because I always want to say Moulin Rouge. I've got two samples here. One is, a, they're both 140 and one's hot press and one is a cold press. Let's see here. By Just by feel, this is the cold press and this is the hot press. And I'm right. Okay, so these are, let's see, these are 100% cotton, cotton, and they're internally and surface sized. So that's cool. They're natural white, acid free, and they're made without bleaching agents. And it has a mold resistant treatment. So I don't know if all watercolor papers have that, but this description specifically said these papers have mold resistant treatment so that's good if you happen to live in a humid climate keep that in mind so going forward paper durability there's some issues with the paper lifting with the masking tape as right here as you can see and not not so much with the uh cold press but the hot press seems to be a little bit more difficult I, I do tend to like the cold press a little bit better out of these two. 
and I, I did some salt technique here and I believe I tried a little bit of frisket. I don't think I tried that technique on this one. Maybe a little bit in the, the bark, but I, I do like this paper slightly better. So the details on both, I would say, strangely enough, the cold press seemed to hold the details better. I feel like I had some, some bleed with the hot press. They were decent on both, but I happen to like the cold press better. The colors look pretty brilliant on both of them. Um, I didn't have any problems with the washes sinking in, strangely, and I, I used pretty heavy washes. So I was also able to lift the pigment. As you can see, I lifted the pigment here. There is um, some damaging to the paper, just a little tiny bit, but it looks great, you know, handle it. I was able to lift the pigment here and then put a second wash of a different color on top. So that was pretty good. There is some weird absorption issues with the heavy pigment. Well, I use a light wash, a heavy wash with a light pigment load. But there is still, after a while, you can only do so many washes on a hot press. Otherwise, it starts getting upset with you and it'll give you what for. So that's just the nature of hot press. I have to balance everything out. I do happen to like the detail, though. In hot press, it's easier to paint detail in hot press than it is cold. But for some reason, I like cold better. And eh, we'll see. So... The pigment lifting, like I said, pretty good. And the water load and warping, not too bad. I had tape, I taped both these down, so mm, not a problem. Out of these two, I think the Canson Moulin du Roy <laughs> uh, cold press was my favorite over the hot press. For some reason, hot press just acts differently. But yeah, definitely like the cold press, and I would use this again. So moving on. This is L'Aquarelle Canson Heritage. This is 300 pound, hot press, acid free, non-animal sizing. So it's made out of 100% cotton. This is a funny sample. I have actually watched YouTubers test this particular sample out and there's been some confusion. And I told myself I wouldn't make that same mistake, but I did make the same mistake. This is the back of the paper. There is a right and wrong side of this paper. And I don't know why they print the back like this, but it makes me want to paint on this side, just like it did the other two artists. And this side is the wrong side because the water just absorbs into this paper. It's kind of velvety, it's soft, and it's nice, it's got a nice feel. But as you can see, painting on the wrong side of this paper is not a nice experience unless you're looking for kind of an expressionistic paper where the watercolor just does what it wants ah oh, watercolor do as you will do as you will watercolor yeah it's not going to turn a unicorn into a human that's for sure but anyway this is the right side so i had to repaint it again really quickly what do i think of this paper i could get some detail in here and the blending was okay and as you can see you can lift out pigment so paper durability very durable it's very durable it's 300 pounds so it'll take some abuse the bleed and details for some reason it didn't feel like i could get too much detail in it still had some weird absorption like the pigment would just like sink into the paper a little bit too much i don't know it was strange but i was still able to get some detail as you can see Colors, colors are pretty bright uh, around the head area. I was able to put a lot of heavy washes on this. Yeah, I did the whole thing where I, I did several washes, light scrub out, and then put another wash, and then I scrubbed this out later after it time to sit, and it, it almost came completely off. It's pretty good. Like I said, the water, you could load this paper down. There's no warping. I don't have to tape it. That's the great thing about having 300 pound paper, right? It's pretty cool. So would I use this paper again? Yes. I think I would like to try this paper in a larger size and paint something larger. Just to give it another shot. I, I do like the wrong side of the paper too, but I would probably do something else. I don't know what, maybe some abstracts or something, but it, it's, it's fun. Just don't go in with a plan if you're going to paint on the wrong side of this paper. This side is, is okay. Would I use it? 
did I really like it for this subject matter? Not really. It's good paper, but maybe not for painting hyper detail. All right, moving on. This is the other, let's see here. This is the other Canson, La Aquarelle Canson Heritage. This is the 140 pound. And strangely enough, this acted a little bit differently than the 300. I actually like the, one for, uh, the 140 better than the, three, than the 300. I put some salt, a little bit of salt. I put multiple washes. It's, yeah, I liked it. The durability of the paper is obviously less. It's 140. It did, it did, some of the paper did lift. Oh gosh, I don't even know if you can see that. But some of the paper did lift. Let's see if I turn this light on. Boop. Can you see it? Some of the paper did lift when I lifted up the masking tape. That's, that's normal. Details. I was able to get pretty fine details in the eyeball and the beak with some of the feathers. So that's cool. The colors are nice and bright and vibrant. You know, I, I, I always paint a little bit differently every time I did the bird just to try out new techniques. And it worked. Pigment lifting was pretty good. And um, I taped it down, but the water, it took, it took a lot of water. So I do actually like this paper. I would get this paper again. So this is the Lac Orel Canson Heritage 140 Hot Press. 100% cotton. So good paper. All right. Next, this is one of my favorite papers right here. I ordered a whole sheet of this from Dick Blick. This is Fabriano Artistico, extra white soft press. Soft press is somewhere in between hot press and cold press. So it has a little bit of texture, but not as much as cold press. Let's talk about the durability of the paper. Uh, it's 300 pounds. It's super durable. I can scrub the heck out of this paper and it's pretty good. The details, as you can see, I was able to get a lot of detail into this paper. I liked it a lot. There was a little bit of bleed here. I used Frisket to get a nice clean edge and then I went back and tried to do a wash. Just paint it over with a medium wet to a light wet brush with some pigment in there just to get that line and it did bleed a little bit but I think that's because of the texture of the paper. Let's see here. The colors are nice and bright. Look how pretty. I love it. You can lift pigment, no problem. The surface of the paper feels just fine. It wasn't damaged at all by my, my rough treatment. As I said, also, water load, warping, not really much warping. I mean, this is 300. I folded this in half, but as you can see, the paper bent a little bit, but not a problem. I can just iron this out. And it'll be fine but I love this paper it's so much fun to paint on I'm I'm glad I got this okay the next one is everybody's favorite a fan favorite is aquarelle arches art yeah I'm just gonna pronounce it in my with my American accent sorry so this is a watercolor block it is 1% cotton 140 pounds cold press I bought this a long time ago I was afraid there might be some sizing issues with this paper and there were let's talk about the durability um the durability it's pretty durable it's in a block so that's cool i painted on a previous piece of paper above this i painted something that i really abused i abused that paper so that's why there is a significant bend in the block so the paper just lifted up off the block i'll probably have to tape that back together again because it's kind of annoying to sit up like that that was unusual abuse, so I'm not going to hold it against the block. This is what I had on top of it before, but I, I sculpted on top of it. This is actually a watercolor. Or, wow. Paper clay. That's what I want to say. This is paper clay. So, yeah, I abused this sh uh, the heck out of this paper. <laughs> Almost said a bad word. Um, I abused the heck out of this paper, and I probably shouldn't use this technique on this paper, but... You know what? I didn't have any problems painting on the paper even after I, I sculpted on top of it. Pretty good. I shouldn't do it again because obviously the block doesn't like it. Paper durability? It's pretty durable. I can get I can get a lot of detail in this paper. I mean, it's cold, cold pressed. You know, not that much, but I can get a fair amount. For cold press, I'm, I'm impressed. The, the colors are bright. 
uh, when I do have a problem with weird absorption issues, as you can see these little dots, that's probably a sizing issue. But once again, I've had this water block for so many years and it's been sitting in storage. And the summers here get in the hundreds plus, especially in that storage area. So this this poor paper has been subject to a lot of abuse. I don't, I don't blame Arches for this. I'll, I'll paint this and I'd buy it again. I could lift pigment, no problem. This is a block, so it'll take a lot of water before it does this. And I, I put a lot of water in on this pad. Overall, it was pretty good. I was able to get fair enough detail and it was really fun painting on this paper. I enjoy painting on this paper and the color's great. So what I get arches again, absolutely, heck yes, I would. Moving on, I'm going to talk about these papers. This is a Fluid 100. It is Hot Press 140. It's a block and it's archival 100% rag cotton paper that's gelatin size. Paper durability, I, I tried scrubbing some stuff out and it didn't affect the surface of the paper. It's in a, it's in a block that's glued on two sides only. It's pretty good. The details, I could get some details in there. This is hot press. Color, the color's really bright, but you can't really move the pigment around on the paper, which is weird to me. Once I put a pigment down, and this is a non-staining color again, I tried to lift it off and it was not budging on this paper. Once you put a wash on, you better hurry up and do whatever you're gonna do with it. Otherwise, it's gonna stay on this paper. Once you put a color down, that's it. I would probably go for light washes, not that many washes really, unless you just, you know, if you're one of those watercolorists that draw every little aspect of the photograph onto the paper and you know exactly where everything's going to go, then I think this paper will be great. If you make a lot of mistakes like I do and you change your mind and you want to try something different, you want to lift some pigment off or move things around, no, you better commit. Don't, don't be a wiffle waffler with this paper. Water load, it'll take, yeah, I didn't have a real problem with it. It does lift a little bit, but other, other than that, it's not bad. I mean, it's also really small. It's a postcard sized piece of paper. So I wasn't able to put too much water on it, which probably helped. It wasn't bad. Uh, would I use this paper? I mean, would I buy it again? I don't know. There's so many other options. I just don't, I don't really, I'm not really digging that the pigment doesn't want to move once you put it down. That's not, that's not cool to me. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I can use it for some other purpose, but you know what? It's not bad. I bought it and I'll use it. So there's that. I had, I bought another fluid paper here. This fluid 100 cold press, slightly larger, and this is a pochade. And um, this was earlier. So I painted this fish and I also painted a uh, ptarmigan on this paper. And um, it was pretty fun. I liked it. So I painted this bird and as you can see, you can't get pretty good details in the feathers. I was able to get a lot of detail in, in the, in the ptarmigan feathers and in, in the fish as well. Let's see, but here's the weird thing. I think there's a right and wrong side of these papers because I painted a landscape on this paper and it was not fun. It was like a sponge, it just absorbed the pigment. And also the, the pigment is not very bright. You know, the, the lifting wasn't the best, even with the non, you know, non staining colors, you expect it to just lift off. It didn't really. So everything kind of looks dull. And that, you know, these colors, these colors were not dull. Is it durable? Yes. Can you get details? Yes. The colors, uh, yeah, you can get pretty good colors sometimes. Can you can you lift out some colors? You can sometimes. And it, it takes a lot of water because it is 300 pound paper, but this is what really threw me off. It was not fun to paint this landscape at all. And it does, it's very muddy. I don't know if that's a quality issue or what, but this one thing throws me off this paper. I liked it up until this point. Moving on, this is the Langton. It's a, just a pad, it's 140 pound hot press. It's wood-free paper, so it's not cotton, 
it's it's that wood pulp stuff. This is a still life. It's one of my favorite still lifes. And it was fine. You know, everything was fine. I think that this, like, your paper is just going to depend on how you paint and what you paint. And I didn't use really heavy washes. You know, I think Hot Press doesn't like heavy washes. Obviously. The color is great. The paper durability is, it's, you know, it's okay. I was able to get pretty good detail in that. And pigment lifting, it's okay. I, I didn't try lifting too much pigment out, but I didn't use really heavy washes on this. I think I would use it for something other than figures. Next up, Blick. Oh, this Blick Premier paper. Let's talk about this, right? 100% cotton, mold made, acid free. It's a hot press, 140 pounds. So the durability of the paper, meh, it's, it's not the best. It's not the best. Let's see here. The details, mm, there's a lot of bleed in this paper, even for being hot press. And I didn't really abuse it that much, but as you see, it's really hard to get the detail. I have a problem with pigment lifting. I have a problem with the pigment absorbing strangely into the paper with the washes. The colors are, you know, they can be brilliant. I'm not gonna buy this paper again it makes me angry it doesn't work for how i paint so there it is sorry blick i don't i don't like your watercolor paper Wah. all right so i'm going to talk about sketchbooks this first one up is caddy sketchbook it's really cool it's handmade in india um it is this is smooth it's made out of cotton rag it's a 90 pound paper and it feels like some of these papers feel thicker and thinner than others so i mean it's handmade so i guess there's going to be some variation right um it is 100 percent long fibered cotton rag it's internally sized with new uh neutral ph acid free and a medium surface oh uh, you know like it's like a smooth press so um I'm going to say I painted this bird on this paper and it does not. So the paper durability, it's actually pretty durable. I did a really heavy, heavy, heavy wash on this paper and I did tape it down and the tape didn't affect the paper at all. And I, you know, I was able to paint on the back of this paper. You, you, it, there's no bleed. It's really amazing. I've really put a lot of water and pigment on this side and there's there's no bleed whatsoever and it's only 90 pounds so for being 90 pound paper it can take a lot of abuse as you can see over here I did some lift outs it does have this strange when you lift it out I think this is the gelatin or actually it's the fibers of the paper so it just is strange I think there's excess gelatin on the surface of the paper which if you're if you scrub it'll really uh it'll really pull it up it's just weird i don't know if it's the fiber or the gelatin or both but i uh i actually tried wiping some of the excess sizing off it's just weird it's not it's durable but at the same time it's not durable so it's very strange paper the it bleeds like a mofo. The, the pigment bleeds all over the place. You can't really get good detail at all. So I wouldn't use it for that. I mean, it is a sketchbook, so meh. The colors are, uh, I mean, colors are really bright. So that's, that's a point in its favor. You're able to move the colors around for sure. Like if I didn't like something, I just scrub it out and repaint it over. It looks really, really bright. So pigment lifting's good. And it'll take a lot of water load with minimal warping. Yeah, I taped it down. It's 90 pound paper. That's just amazing. It's just, this is just a really strange paper. So I painted a bunch of different other things. Um, as you can see, these washes, it, the pigment kind of absorbs, heavier washes with pigment absorb strangely into the paper, as you can see. You can use that for, to your advantage as an effect, but if you're trying to do something like, um, you know something with detail or you're trying to uh if you're trying to do something like skin tone oh man maybe somebody better than me can pull it off but i sure as heck wasn't i these aren't these aren't even heavy washes it just absorbed into the paper strangely 
So I wouldn't paint watercolor skin tones on this, no portraits. Um, maybe if you're doing gouache, it's fine. But as you can see, the details, it's not, it's really fuzzy. It's probably to do with the long grain of the paper. I, and I don't know. I mean, sorry, I can't be more articulate about this, but it was just weird paper. So I, I tried a flower. I tried painting swatches. I, the colors are very, very bright. And it was fun to paint on. I just wouldn't use, I wouldn't use this for any kind of detail. Overall, it's a sketchbook. I like, I like the format. I like the fact that it's bendy. You can just throw it in your, your, your purse or your backpack or whatever and go. And, you know, it'll take some abuse and it's fun. It's actually fun paper to paint on. Just don't take it too seriously. So that's that. This is my old uh, moleskin watercolor paper. And I bought this specifically for painting gouache. Um, well, yeah, I painted some watercolor with it, but eh, it's good for light washes, right? Nothing to, maybe like sketches and stuff, but, um, and gouache, you know, it's perfectly fine. But when you try to actually do watercolor, um, the, first off, the paper durability, I wouldn't push it with this paper. I believe this is a 90 pound paper and it's not cotton for sure. Painting something that requires a nice even wash, that's going to be a little difficult. I tried it in the background, it didn't work, so I used gouache instead. But yeah, the background, just trying to get a nice even wash was not happening. The details, you're able to get details in this, I will say. Even though it's like a, a cold press, you can still get pretty good detail. So, And then the colors are pretty bright. Can you lift pigment on this? Not really. This, I tried lifting the pigment back and I don't think this was a staining color. I don't think this is a staining color, but uh, it didn't want to, it didn't want to go anywhere once I put it on the paper. And I, I scrubbed pretty hard, so at least the paper is durable enough to take that scrubbing, but it didn't really move the pigment. Mm, water, so this warped a little bit. I didn't tape this down and I didn't use a really heavy load for this one. I used a pretty heavy load of wash like water washes with this and it did warp a bit but you know in a sketchbook you just close it back up and it'll flatten it out eventually so not bad while you're painting though it's kind of annoying so if you were to you know anybody using a moleskin just tape it mask it down it's better for gouache than watercolor and you know pencil okay so moving on this is the final piece of paper i'm going to talk about is this strathmore visual journal as you can see it is uh, 140 pound. It is some sort of, um, it's pulp, it's wood pulp. It is just a watercolor journal. I'm sure everybody has seen this. I got this off of Amazon. So I will say I tried painting a portrait on this. And um, as you can see, there are really strange issues with how the wash has absorbed the pigment. So I can't, it's really hard for me to get a nice even wash with this paper. Maybe somebody better than me could do it, but I had a problem. So if I have a problem, it's not going to work for me, at least not for uh, portraits. Painted the bird and um, I was able to get the detail. This is actually a larger image. So the larger the image, the more detail you can put in there. Couldn't get an even wash with the background. So I painted gouache in the back. I get, every time I get frustra frustrated with watercolor, when I can't get an even wash, I just go back in and put a gouache background in every single time. So if you see gouache on the paper, that means it's not, I don't like it for watercolor. I had problems. But as you can see, I could still get pretty good detail and it's pretty durable. I didn't tape this down. It's 140. There are some buckling, but it takes the, uh, it takes a good load of water. I was able to lift some pigment out, but meh. It's not the best for that. The durability, it's pretty durable. I did abuse this paper, especially when I got upset with it. and I put the gouache over top. It's, it's not bad. This is fine for what it is. I actually like painting on this paper a lot. It's fun. And it's got this nice like hard cover here that sandwiches. There's one in the front and one in the back. It's really cool. I, I definitely like this as a journal, as just going in there and painting something really quick. 
would I use it for any piece that's going to be on display? No, not really. Out of all of these, out of all of these papers, now that I've gone through everything, I'm going to say Fabriano Artistico was my favorite. I liked Arches. The Arches was pretty cool. Fabriano Artistico, or Fabriano Artistico, Arches, and some of these, I like the Aquarelle Canson 140. And I, uh, I really liked the, really, really, really like the Two Rivers. And I did like the Canson Moulin du Roy. So, hey, I got a lot of good papers out of this. I'm pretty jazzed. I'm pretty jazzed. Let me center that a bit so everybody can see. Pretty jazzed that I got some pretty good papers. It took me uh, months of testing and painting this bird several million times. Actually, I exaggerate. It wasn't even like 20 times, but still it seems like a lot. So out of these papers, Fabriano Artistico, Moulin du Roy 140, Cassin Aquarel 140. I think these are almost all cold pressed too. A Aquarel Arches. Oh, man, maybe, maybe the powers that be are telling me something. But in any case, I love these papers, so I, I hope all of my rambling has helped somebody out there. Somebody will come across this and watch it. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to, you know, leave questions in the comments. I'm on YouTube just about every day looking at stuff. If anybody happens to see this and you have questions, you just let me know. Hopefully this helps somebody out there, and I wish y'all good luck with your painting. Ugh. All right. Have a good one. Bye.